Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and what I'm going to go over in this video is time-lapse photography. As Sony calls it, the interval shooting function. The newer cameras are coming out with this feature. It's long overdue, but we're happy to have it. So I want to show you how that feature works on the Sony cameras. I'm going to use the Sony RX100 Mark 7 for my camera body, but like I said, all the new cameras that are coming out from Sony have this feature built in. So time-lapse photography, you might not be aware of what that is. Basically, the camera will take a shot every X amount of seconds, and that's where the interval shooting function terminology comes from. So like every five seconds, it'll take a shot for like a half hour or whatever. You could then take those photos, those individual frames, and you can combine them together to create video footage. And that's what's known as time-lapse photography. So I'm going to show you how to do that using the free software that Sony provides, known as the Imaging Edge Viewer software. I'm also going to show you how I like to do it, which is using a much more powerful program called Final Cut Pro. And that program is extremely powerful, gives you more versatility. So I'm going to show you how to set the camera up. I'm going to show you what all the interval shooting functions do and mean. So then I'm going to show you in my lab scene how the time-lapse feature works, you're just using some slime on the table. It's a just a silly demonstration to show you how the function works using the camera. And then I'm gonna show you some better time-lapse samples that I got in the field. So before we get to that, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button below the video so this way you stay tuned to all the latest videos. In addition, hit that notification bell right next to the subscribe button. That'll make sure that you get informed that a new video is out. And then if you found this video useful, do me a favor, please give me a thumbs up. And if you really want to go above and beyond, share it with your friends. That will really help get the video out there. Also, below the video, there's a, a little button there that'll say show more. Sometimes there's a little arrow if you're on your mobile device. That will go below the video into the description area. And that's where all the links are for other tutorials, photography deals, support links, all sorts of stuff like that. All right, let's get on with this video. All right guys, so I just wanted to go over the camera settings for interval shooting and for the camera body I'm using the Sony RX100 Mark 7, which is extremely powerful, but all the newer cameras have the time-lapse function or as Sony calls it interval shooting. The first thing we're going to do, we're just going to click menu and you're going to want the camera on a tripod for this purpose for sure. So I'm using that little mini tripod that I've been using for my recent video tutorials. You can shoot in RAW quality or you can shoot in JPEG quality as far as the file format goes. I recommend RAW quality so this way you can actually edit your photos a little bit before you use them for a time lapse if you want. But if you want it to be a little bit faster and you don't want to bother editing your photos, just set that to JPEG format. Then if you scroll down, if you're going to use the Sony software, the Imaging Edge software, which I'm going to show you later in this tutorial, you're going to want to set the aspect ratio to 16 by 9 because most movies are in that format anyway. Setting it to 16 by 9 is a good way to go. Or you could leave it at 3 by 2 like so, and that will actually give you more editing latitude when it comes to post-processing your time-lapse video. For example, if you want to do like a Ken Burns effect and you want to crop your image so over time it looks like you're zooming in or panning left or whatever, this will give you more cropping room in your post-production. But if you don't want to do any of that and you just want it to be exactly how you have the camera set, then you can just set it to 16 by 9. That's up to you. Sony recommends you set it to 16 by 9 when using their software, but you really don't have to. It just it makes post-processing a little bit easier. So that's how I like to have my camera set for that. Now the other thing I needed to show you is interval shooting. Now right here you have interval shooting function and this is time-lapse photography. Sony calls it interval shooting. So in order to get this to work you do have to turn it on. Right now it's set to off. So when it's on and you press the shutter button the interval shooting is going to start. So that's why there's an on and off situation with this setting. Shooting start time this is basically how long it's going to take after you press the shutter button for the interval shooting to actually start. So one second is fine. And again, you can always skip the first couple of images in this process. You don't have to use all the images. And by default, the camera will group all the interval shooting images into a group onto the memory card. So when you're in playback mode, you can actually preview the time lapse. It's pretty cool how it does that. So shooting interval time. Now this is how long the camera is going to wait before it takes another exposure. So it's going to take a shot, then it's going to wait five seconds and take another shot. Now if you have a really slow shutter because you're shooting at night, 
you might have to make this much longer. So by default, five seconds works pretty good. And I'm actually gonna shoot some ready to play lava slime and I'm gonna show you how the blob like turns flat over time just to demonstrate this in my little lab scene here. Number of shots, now this basically determines how long your interval shooting is gonna go for. So based on how I have it set right now, 330 shots, you can see here on the bottom, it's gonna go for 27 minutes and 25 seconds. So that's the total process. Now, AE tracking sensitivity. This is the auto exposure tracking. Now, I leave it on mid for the most part, and this is good if you're filming a sunset or a sunrise and the sun comes up, you are kind of gonna need the camera to auto exposure adjust. Otherwise, your scene might be blown out and it's not gonna look that good. So the camera will actually track the exposure as it goes. That's a pretty cool feature, and I usually leave it at mid. But you can adjust that, low, high, and so forth. And if you go to the right, you have shutter type in interval, electronic shutter. That is a good way to go, but you can also select mechanical shutter if you like. So depending on your lighting environment and stuff, the mechanical shutter might be better because sometimes you can get like stray artifacts if you're shooting under fluorescent lighting and things like that. But for the most part, electronic shutter will use less battery life and it'll work fine for you. And then shoot interval priority. This basically means if your camera, for whatever reason, the exposure becomes longer than your interval, the camera will then have to decide, well, am I gonna stick to the interval or am I gonna stick to the exposure time? So if I have it set for five seconds right now, if the scene changes and it's getting really dark out and my exposure now needs to be seven seconds as opposed to five seconds, like what's the camera supposed to do in that scenario? Right now I have it set where it'll automatically switch to seven seconds between intervals. If you turn that on, it will force the camera to do five seconds every interval. So that's what this feature is for. And I honestly recommend leaving it off because if your exposures are getting longer, you are gonna need it to adjust for that in order for the exposure to be proper. Otherwise your exposures are gonna be off. So depending on what you're doing, you know, you might wanna change that. But by default, I would recommend leaving that off. So I'm gonna turn this on like so. And now you can see my bucket of slime. All right, so with the display mode set to this, you can see right now I have interval right there on the bottom left, and it says five seconds is my interval. I'm gonna take 330 shots. I'm in aperture priority mode. The next thing we're gonna to need to do is I'm gonna to need to dump that slime out and start the process, but I'm gonna start the process before I dump the slime out because I want the time lapse to show the whole thing. Basically, I'm just gonna hit the shutter button and that's gonna start the process. So let's get going here. And now you can see the interval shooting has officially started. All right, so if you're shooting a time lapse or interval sequence, you can stop it at any time. Like right now, the bubble that we were trying to record um, just popped, so I'm pretty much done with the sequence, but you can see I still have like 70 shots to go. All you gotta do is hit the shutter button and that stops the sequence. Now, it still maintains all those photos on the memory card, so you still have that interval shooting group, but you don't have to wait, you know, you don't have to wait for it to end. You know, you don't have to go through the entire sequence. And notice for the bubbles, I changed it to three seconds as opposed to five seconds in the previous test with the slime blob. All right, so now I recorded a bunch of interval shooting samples with the slime using uh, my kids and stuff. We had some fun. And now I just wanted to show you how you can view it on the camera. So if you hit the play button here on the Sony RX100 Mark VII, it's right here. It's gonna be in a different spot depending on what camera you're using. But if you hit the play button, you can go in and you can see how it puts the different interval shooting segments into groups. You see how it's like stacked? It looks like a stack there. So if you want to play them, you hit the center button here and it just basically shows you the first shot. So that doesn't work. So what you have to do is you have to go into the menu, go into playback mode, and you have continuous playback for interval. Now you also want to set the playback speed for interval. Now I have it set to two because these recent slime recordings I took, I changed the interval to two. That first one that I did when I was setting this up, I had set to five. So now that I have it set to the correct speed, you go to continuous playback for interval. And now if I hit this, it's gonna play, see? So it's playing it at a speed of two. And if I go to a different group like this one, this was just a bubble and they were much shorter clips. Now this one came out really cool, watch. 
And here's one that Jace did, he was holding the slime. Now let's move on to the computer and I will show you how to make a, you know, real time lapse movie using those images. All right guys, so here we are. I'm on my Macintosh computer, so this is going to look a little bit different if you're using a Windows type machine, PC. Basically what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to import your files to your computer and just copy them over to a folder, you know, off your memory card, and that's what I did here. And then you're going to want to launch your viewer app. And that's if you want to use the free software provided by Sony, which isn't really the greatest software. It works okay, but it's kind of cumbersome to use. It's a little bit slow. It is free and it does work. So I'm just gonna launch the viewer app and I already have it up here behind that screen. And I copied all the files over from the slime sample testing and I put it in the folder 1019 because today is October 19th at the time I'm recording this video. And the files I have are a, a lot, you know? So the first sequence was 330 files and I wanted to show you that but it just takes forever to process these images. So I'm going to do another sequence that's a little bit shorter, and it's right here. So Layla actually put the slime on this little figure's head, and it blobbed over the head, and it looks pretty cool as a time lapse. So you're going to want to go to the thumbnail view up here on the top right, and then you're going to find your first image in your sequence, and then you're going to scroll down to the last image. And I'm just going to go to, I'm not going to go all the way to the end, because again, this takes a really long time. So I'm just going to go to let's see right about right about here looks good so just hold the shift key down and then click the last image in your sequence and now you can see all the images are selected so I select the first image first went to the last image I wanted to use in my sequence and while holding the shift key down I clicked and that then selected all the images now what you're gonna to need to do is go to tools and you're gonna to go to create time-lapse movie the first thing output method I'm just gonna apply each raw files own settings to each raw file and I'm just going to leave it at that for now. This is a more advanced feature here where you can actually apply a preset that you might have saved while doing editing or something like that. And for this tutorial, we're not going to do that. I'm going to keep it as simple as possible. So save in. I'm just going to click this browse button. And I have a folder here, TL-1, which stands for timelapse-1. But I'm going to create a new folder. So let me go back to 1019, which is where all the images are. And then I'm going to click this new folder button and I'm going to label it TL-2 for time lapse 2. Like so. Then I'm going to click open and I'll use the original file name. That's fine. Aspect ratio. I'm going to change that to 16 by 9 because I want the format to be correct for viewing on, you know, TV and stuff like that. And 16 by 9 is the correct format for the most part when it comes to that. So I'm just going to select 16 by 9 and that's basically going to auto crop the image for me to the correct format. Now you can also, as I mentioned on the camera, you can set this to do it automatically on the camera as you're taking your time lapse, which is a great option. But the reason I didn't do that was because when I use a more advanced editor, you have the power to manipulate your time lapse much more if it's not in this aspect ratio. You don't have that option in this software though. You just you're stuck with whatever crop it is. As far as I can tell, I can't figure out how to change the crop when doing the actual time lapse. So, I'm just going to click the next button and now it's going to process all these files. It's going to basically create jpegs out of all of them and then it's going to open up into another program. Okay, so once the files are all processed, it'll say here all processing complete and then you got to click this next button. And then it does this preparing for editing and it launches this editor. And now it just tells you that it might have a hard time playing depending on the quality, blah, blah, blah. So you just click OK. And now this is your editor. And again, you're extremely limited with what you can do here. There's really like no tools whatsoever except this trim option. So you can trim it if you want. You can add music. There's a couple of default tracks here you can add if you want but you're very limited as to what you can do. Time-lapse settings, it's just the speed you want to play it back are your only options. So for now, let's just watch what this looks like. It's not the greatest time-lapse, but I'm just trying to give you an idea of how this works. I'm just going to click Next. Now it's asking you where you would like to save it and what quality. So I'm going to save it in that same folder, the TL-2 folder you can see right here. You can browse though and save it somewhere else if you like. Then it's asking you what kind of quality you want to save it as. I want to save it as 4K quality. It's the best quality. And I'm just going to click Save. 
and then you're just going to have to click OK. It's just letting you know it might take a while. It doesn't really take that long though. Once this is done, it'll actually pop up with the video file and then you can play it. It's an MP4 file, so you can just upload it to YouTube or whatever at that point. So here it is, and here's what it looks like. So if I click play, you can see that's what it looks like. All right, so now I'm gonna show you the more advanced way, but the better way to do the time-lapse video, in my opinion. So the first thing I did was import my files to Adobe Lightroom. And in here, I have all my files. So I can switch to thumbnail view to make it similar to the Sony software that you just saw. But I have way more power in this program. It's way easier to use. Obviously, I'm more familiar with this program as well, but it's definitely a better way to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this image. I'm going to go into development mode and I'm going to click on the histogram and just raise up my exposure a little bit like so, because these are raw files. Don't forget. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply a little bit of sharpening, drag the masking up, and that looks pretty good. I'll just leave it like that for now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into thumbnail view by hitting the E key and then hitting the G key. And now I'm in thumbnail view and I'm just going to scroll down all the way to the last image. And it's right here. So now I'm just going to hold the shift key down. And now I have all the images selected. Now notice here on the bottom how this one is brighter than the other. That's because the one that's brighter is the primary. So what I'm going to do now is hit the D key to go into development mode, or I can just click on the development word up here. D is the shortcut. And then down here on the right, there's an option to sync. It'll basically sync the settings on the first photo to all the other photos. So I'm just going to click check all, and then I'm going to click synchronize. And now it's going to synchronize all those photos so they have the same exposure value and the sharpness that I applied. All right, so now that's done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to export. I'll click the export button. And I actually have a folder already created here for Final Cut Pro photos. So I'm just going to click that preset that I have here. But you don't have to do that. You can just start here and use these settings. You can select your folder and put it wherever you want. So I'm actually going to save mine, like I said, to my Final Cut Pro folder. And then I'm going to put it in a subfolder, and I'm going to call it TL-1 for time lapse 1. Then I'm going to name it RX100M7. So I'm going to put it in that folder. So all these files are in that particular folder. And then you can go down here and you can select your quality and all that stuff. So I'm just going to leave it at the original size. So I'm going to uncheck the resize to fit. Sharpening, I'll leave that amount to low. And that is pretty much it. Quality 80% is fine. So I'm just going to click export and this is going to take a couple of minutes. All right, so here we are in Final Cut Pro X. And I just wanted to show you how to do it in this program. And this program is extremely advanced. You could see one of the videos I have here that I'm working on. And uh, it's, it's very powerful. But what I'm going to do for this time lapse tutorial, I'm going to create a new project. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File, New, and I'm just going to click Project. And then it's going to ask me where I want to save the project. I'm going to save it in the in, in the event I already have created, which is the RX100 Mark 7 event. And I'm just going to call this one Time Lapse Test, like so. Time Lapse Test. All right, that'll do. And then I'm going to use Custom Settings. Now I'm going to do 4K. I'm going to do 24P. Rendering, that's fine, that'll work. I'm just gonna leave it like that at default. And then I'm just gonna click OK. So now I have a new blank project down here below. And you can see it's called Time Lapse Test right here. So what I gotta do now is I gotta find that folder that I saved all those time lapse images in. And here is the folder right here. So we have our folder here, and here's all the images. And you want them in, cor in the correct order. So you're going to want to sort them by file name, like I have here, 33, 34, and so forth. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to do a Command A on my Macintosh to select all of them. That would be a Control A on a PC. So I am just going to click and drag the images right into my timeline. All right, so now that they're in my timeline, the next thing I'm going to do, and again, I'm using a Macintosh, I'm going to do Control D. And that will go up here and it'll select your time code here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter one because I want each one of these images to be one frame 
in my sequence. So I'm just gonna click one and then hit enter. And that's gonna make all those files one frame as opposed to three seconds, which is what the default is for still images. Then what I'm gonna do, now that they're still all selected here, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say new compound clip. And that's gonna turn all those images into a actual movie clip. And I'll just do time-lapse test clip, that's fine. I'm gonna click okay. And now it's just one clip. So you can see here, I just have one movie clip and all those little images are no longer there, you know? So it's much easier to work with. So now what I can do is I can actually crop my image. So if I go to crop, I'm gonna click Ken Burns and you can create a start and an end like so. So I'll put that at the end and I will put this at the beginning. I don't really want it to be that much of a drastic change. And then I'm gonna click done. And now it's gonna render the file. You can see these little dots here. That means it's rendering. So if I click play here, it's probably gonna be kind of choppy. It's not really gonna play very smooth, see? Cause it's still rendering. So that's pretty much it. You just turn it into a compound clip and then you can crop it. And at that point, you're ready to export the file. So I'm just gonna to go to File, and in this case, it's Share. It's actually not called Export on the Final Cut program, and you just go to Export File. You could then export that file however you want. You'll see there's tons of options in a powerful program like this. Just go to Settings and Format. You can do Computer, Better Quality. I always choose Better Quality because, well, it's better quality. Why wouldn't you? Then you do high resolution here, this is 4K, and then you would just click next, and it'll export your movie. And I will do that, and then you'll see the result in a second. And I'm just gonna do time-lapse test, click save. All right, so here I am on my desktop, and here is the time-lapse test that I just exported. And if you just double-click it, it opens up in QuickTime.